Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, JP, and it is time for another JP's uh, product pick of the week. What show is this? I, I almost gave the wrong name. You can tell the year is winding down. Uh, so, uh, first of all, before we get started, uh, I'm excited to say this is our 17th episode of the show. So, thank you so much for uh, coming along with me on this journey uh, to, to get to do fun, weird stuff like that right there. Uh, which I have to tell you, I enjoy sending that photo to my mom and dad every week and have them, uh, laugh over, uh, over, uh, uh, messaging, um, because pretty much making those weird faces was, uh, was my career goal from the beginning. What's up? Uh, but yeah, thank you for putting up with that. I don't know what's going on with that. It seems to be more often this show than, uh, the other broadcast uh, later in the week on Thursday. So who knows why? Uh, yeah, thank you. Let me know in the um, in the chat if that catches up. I am seeing a really low bandwidth warning inside of um, YouTube, which is unfortunate. But uh, sync is okay now. Yeah, sometimes this gets, I, I've, I have to measure it when I fix it later. And it's, it's like six seconds out of sync sometime, which is ridiculous. Uh, all right, so... Let's get to it. Um, first of all, uh, I will um, wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays because this is going to be uh, the last regular JP show before the uh, new year. And uh, But I will be doing the Adabox unboxing tomorrow night. So if you're interested, come on by. It'll be at 8 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday the 23rd. That'll be the Adabox 17 unboxing. Ooh, coincidence, this is the 17th episode of the show, and that's going to be Ada Box 17. I don't think so. Um, all right, I'm going to take these off because they're distracting me, and I'll set them back here. How about nice little, nice little uh, glowy lights there? Uh, all right, so let's get started with the actual show. This is it. Oh, we're starting to drift again. I'm going to poke it. Uh, we'll try. Uh, the broadcast can sync itself again. So sorry. I will, you know what, I, next time in the new year, I will try uh, one other thing, which is I'll try broadcasting this show at a lower uh, resolution, lower bit rate, all that. See if that helps the YouTube and the other uh, broadcasts stay in sync, because it's maddening. Uh, all right, so let's get to it, shall we? Uh, so for the uh, product pick of the week this week, I'm going to first of all say, Ermagerd, head over to this URL or go to this QR code right here. That's going to take you to the product page. You can watch this show inside the product page, and there you're going to get 50% off just during the time of this live stream. So head, it's product 4366. That's product ID, so you can go to adafru.it slash 4366. Head into the product page, which looks an awful lot like that right there. So head on into there, and what you'll see when I refresh this page is... Half price, $2.98 is going to do it. So head to that product page, and uh, now let's find out a little bit more about this product. What I'm going to do is go into the Wayback Machine and have Lady Ada tell us all about it. Take it away, Lady Ada. This is the TLV 439D uh, triple access magnetometer, suggested by Phil B. actually quite a while ago. I just didn't get to it until now, um, but now I have it. It is a very uh, low cost magnetometer. The deal with this magnetometer is it's not good for detecting earth magnets, like the magnet earth, like you can't tell which way north is. Mm. Not good at that, because it's not very precise. Um, what it is good at is uh, detecting a rare earth magnet. So for example, this magnet here, you'll see as I get closer, it can detect the X and Y will tell me um, where this magnet is located. So it's really good at high strength magnet detection. And it's originally designed for making, um, the turning this magnet, you put it on a joystick and you basically make a joystick that has no mechanical connections. Because people who, when you have a joystick, eventually it's a potentiometer, eventually it wears out because people use it so much. So it's not durable long-term. So if you want a non-contact potentiometer, this makes a great version. But it can also be used for General purpose, you know, detecting a magnet in XYZ space from a couple inches away. It's not good. Once you get about this far, it's not so good. But, you know, close up, a couple inches, a couple centimeters, pretty good. It's uh, I squared C, so it works with uh, CircuitPython and Python. 
And then I'm just printing out um, the XYZ data over the OLED here. Okay. So that's this week's new product. That's it. Triple axis. Triple axis. That's right. Uh, so this is it. It is the TLV 49 3D. It's a three axis man magnetometer, three axis magnetometer. Uh, easy for me to say. And that's the product pick of the week. Uh, I actually have shown this before on my live stream. I did a, a little demo with it. So what I'd like to do is actually jump uh, back again in time and show you uh, this demo where I'm using it for some servo control. And then we'll talk a little more in detail about what it is, what it's for, uh, how to use it, what the code looks like. And I have another fresh new demo for you. So, hey, JP, take it away. So there's the board. Uh, and what I've got going on is the board, I'm using a uh, Stemma QT connector to connect it up to a Feather. Uh, I actually have a Feather running a Feather PWM servo breakout or, or Feather wing. And uh, connected to it, I have a couple of servos that are on this little pan tilt assembly. Uh, here I've got a big honkin' rare earth magnet. And depending on the direction and strength of that pull in X and Y over this board, I'm going to move this pan tilt um, rig here. So here you can see there is the Y axis and there is the X axis. So I can go side to side. I can go up and down and I can go in little circles. So this is really cool. Unlike the typical analog joystick, which is a couple of potentiometers and there's a physical mechanical connection, this is... Uh, just a magnet, so you can make things uh, that are waterproof. You can make things that have in basically infinite duty cycle because there's no physical parts rubbing against each other, not on the joystick part of it at least. Um, and there's just a whole host of things that you can do when you can measure that magnetic strength and polarity as well uh, as it goes over the board there. I also noticed that this makes kind of... All right, yeah, so, so that's enough of me. Thanks, me. Uh, yeah, so this is a... Um, a pretty cool sensor because it's designed not for compass type of reading, but instead for uh, much stronger rare earth magnets right up next to it. You can use it as a knob. Uh, it can actually measure, if you do some trigonometry, it can measure some rotation of a, uh, a magnet held above it in a, in a little uh, knob or a joystick like I was sort of demonstrating there, but um, you can really manufacture a joystick with a magnet in it and you've got essentially zero contact, no mechanical parts rubbing uh, like you would with a, a regular potentiometer or pair of potentiometers based setup. Um, what I'll do now is actually I'll show you another demo. This is a little something I set up. What you'll see here is I have a magnet on the end of a little uh, piece of spring steel. There is my TLV. 49 3D, right in the middle is the little magnet sensor. I have that running to a, a little cutie pie, and I have a ring of NeoPixels around it. And what you'll see is as I adjust the Z strength or the Z distance of that magnet from the sensor, I'm just lighting up one of these uh, 23 NeoPixels, and I have a little sort of trail going behind it, but whichever uh, NeoPixels blue there is the lead one. And you'll even see you can do some sort of neat things with uh, wiggling it. I've got the little spring steel there flickering and you'll see my uh, magnet causes some chaos there on the, on the NeoPixels. Uh, but this, as you can tell, will work really well for a uh, linear type of input device, in this case going on Z, but you could also go side to side and measure it on X or up and down on Y. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities for interface uh, that you can do using this type of sensor. If we head into the code here for a second, you can see how this is working. This is inside of Atom, and my code is in Circuit Python in this case. You can see what's going on here. I import the libraries for the board for bus IO, so I can use I squared C. So the Stemma QT connector lets us use this over I squared C really simply. Um, and then I'm bringing in NeoPixel, simple IO and uh, pixel buff, which allows me to use the NeoPixels very nicely, and then the sensor, the TLV49 3D library. Uh, then I have a little setup here using I squared C and setting up the device, the sensor, as just calling it TLV. Set up some NeoPixel colors, set up my NeoPixel strip, 
And here is, this is all, all that it takes right here, this line. In fact, I'm going to blow up my text a lot so you can see that. I'm simply asking tlv.magnetic. That returns this tuple of the three micro Teslas, I believe is the unit of measurement, three uh, axes in micro Teslas, so X, Y, and Z. And I'm just setting them up as these three variables here. And then for this demo, all I'm doing is then converting Z, that Z reading, into an integer, because I have whole numbered NeoPixels, and I'm remapping the range. In this case, because of the polarity of this magnet that I'm using, it's actually one of our little magnet feet that goes on our uh, different little uh, NeoPixel, or, or rather uh, LED light panels, LED arrays. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. You can also put those on the back of the mag tag. Uh, this happens to have a, let's, maybe it's south instead of north uh, oriented magnet. So I'm mapping a range from zero to negative 40, even though as it gets closer, that value is going to negative. Uh, it was just through observation. I measured that was a, a good sort of two inch range there. And then I'm remapping that from zero to 23, which gives me the 24 neopixels. And then I'm simply uh, doing a little, little uh, check to see if I'm increasing or decreasing those values to leave that red trail behind or go to black. Uh, so to, to demonstrate that again, you can see here's the magnet getting further and closer. You can also do, uh, if I go too fast, it leaves some, some behind. You can also do some uh, sort of side-to-side -side motion with that. You can see the, the magnet strength increases over that Z axis as I move side to side, but really this is designed, the way I designed this was for uh, pushing that in and out uh, to measure those values. And uh, I also like to show, if you take a look at the, here's the learn guide for the TLV 49 3D. This gives you the pinout, talks about how to use it in both Arduino and in CircuitPython. And if you head to the downloads page, you'll get an uh, option to download the data sheet. There's also a user manual. If we look at that data sheet, this is from Infineon, that's the maker of the sensor. Uh, you'll see we have uh, some sort of uh, describes some of the uses, some potential uses for it. Uh, here it says, this offers accurate three-dimensional sensing with extremely low power consumption. Its magnetic field detection, the sensor reliably measures three-dimensional linear and rotation mo uh, movements. So both these motions and these rotations, or translations and rotations. Applications include joysticks, control elements, uh, electric meters for anti-tampering, and other applications that require accurate angular measurements or low power consumption. So uh, you can go and check that out. And another interesting thing is Infineon has a applications website and on a GitHub they have some 3D models that you can download if you want to print your own little joysticks and knobs and even uh, linear sort of actuators for moving magnets around uh, while leaving the sensor still. So those are uh, available for printing and you can, you can try them out as well as there's some code, some example code that might get you started depending on your application. Um, the, uh, oh, I almost forgot, and what the heck, I just like doing these because I built it and I wanted to show it. Let me, uh, let me go pick up another one from my, my mystery cabinet. I forgot to do that. Hang on. Uh, and Yaniscu, which hopefully that, uh, I'm hoping that was in sync because YouTube was reporting that the stream connection was excellent, which usually means that it's uh, not going to cause us problems. Um, but hopefully we're back, back in business again and, uh, and back in sync. So that is my product pick of the week. Let me take this apart here. This is the TLV 49 3D three axis magnetometer. And I'm gonna go ahead and place that on my Stemma QT board of goodness here. Oops, it's fallen. Let me try that again, but with some, uh, <laughs> with some blue tack. We're going out with a bang here. Oh yeah, this one's a little, this one's a little loose because it was on another one before. All right, let me see if I can convince it to stay. If it 
if, if I can't convince it with some blue tack, there's no convincing it. This stuff is my magic stuff. There we go. It's my TLV 49 3D. And that is my product pick of the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I think that's going to do it for the year. So we have some fun uh, new products that I'll be showing off in the new year. But in the meantime, I encourage you to take some time off, have some fun with your family and friends remotely. Uh, I will see you tomorrow night for the unboxing of Adabox 17. So come on right here to any of your usual Adafruit channels. Uh, and we'll be doing a very fun unboxing at 8 o'clock Eastern time. That's tomorrow on Wednesday, December 23rd. And uh, one last reminder, if you want to go uh, get 50% off on this very cool magnet sensor, head on over to this URL. It's product 4366. Uh, this will get you there. And uh, you can also point the camera at that QR code right there. 50% off, so go pick up one or 10. Uh, all right, so that is... I think that's going to do it. Thank you again so much. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow night for the unboxing. And if not, I will see you next year. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been JP's Product Pick of the Week. Bye-bye.